Hi, I'm Nancy. So Cozy Stitching here on YouTube and on Instagram. Hopefully you will see this video. This is like take number 157,000. Not really, but I guess only doing it once a month. I really don't know what I'm doing. I don't know. Anyway, I had actually, actually filmed this once, had it almost done. Like I was at the very end and um, my tablet just shut off on me. It said I was out of storage space. So I don't know why I'm out of storage space because there's literally nothing on this tablet. There's no pictures. There's, and it shows 70% use, but it shows the percentage of what thing is using. I have system, which I'm thinking that's to operate it, um, and apps. Those are the only two things on there. And I don't even, they're not even apps I put on there. Those are apps that came on the tablet itself. And I've went and deleted apps off of it that don't need to be on there. You know, whatever. Anyway, I'm going to have to have my daughter look at it and figure out why. Because my grandkids have this exact same tablet. And they do all kinds of stuff on it. And they never run out of storage space. So I don't know what my deal is. Anyway, so this is... On, being done on my laptop hopefully it turns out okay hopefully I can keep this at an hour the other one was just a little over an hour the video was hopefully I can get this under under an hour all right so I get together and stitch with friends um, periodically during the month and I have had a piece I've been working on all year long actually there's two pieces one is finished but they go together and I had had all outlined and everything so I've just when I sit and stitch with them we get together for lunch and then we stitch for the afternoon and I've just been doing fill in on these so this is what I take to do fill in when I stitch with my friends this is Henrietta by Stacy Nash it's one of her animal crackers and the other one that I've been working on is Ginny also by Stacy Nash so the one I have finished is Henrietta. And let's see. There she is. There she is. Isn't she cute? I use, um, just pulling my own threads so I don't get redundant. On almost everything I stitch, I pull my own threads. So because... I have a stash and I just use what I got. So anyway, um, this is an 18 count Tobias by Seraphim Fabrics. And then this one is Ginny. So on Ginny, I did change her head because I think her head looks funny because she's looking to the side. And I just think it looks odd. So I just kind of recharted um, Henrietta's head to fit on this one. And there she is. Um, all DMC with the exception of her dress. And this is My Lady's Teal. Mine is Crescent Color Works. But um, it's also Classic Color Works. They have it. And then this, everything's DMC except for her dress, and it is Peace on Earth by Color and Cotton. So it's variegated. And what I did on this is I stitched her bottom part of her dress up and down, and then up here I stitched it sideways just to give it some, um, just some texture and some a little bit different look. And the same with this one. I'm stitching the, part, the bottom part, all of this. And down in here up and down and then when I get up here to the top I'll stitch it across so anyway that's with number one that I worked on this is what I've worked on in October and you'll probably see that again um, next month when I show my whips because um, Uh, let's see. Oh, they're over here. I'm really disappointed because I do have um, another stitchy meetup this month and hopefully a couple next month. We'll see. 
All right, the next thing I worked on is Fall on the Farm by Little House Nail Works. Everybody has seen these. I am stitching eight of the nine. I'm not stitching the center block, which is a quilt block. I am stitching these on 18 count fabric that I writ dyed, and I cannot tell you what color I writ dyed it because um, I started out with one color, didn't like it, did another color, didn't like it, added another color. So I've just kind of added colors till I got to this color. Um, when I showed you last, I had this one done and this one almost done. So I have done the barn and the wishing well. So I am halfway done. Since I'm only doing eight of them, I've done four. So, and I'm doing them in one long piece. So. Love them. They're so pretty. And I'm using all of the called for DMC. With the exception of... Three oh one, which is to me is a rusty, rusty red, and I want a red red, so I'm using um, three fifty five for the red, and then um, one of the browns. I just didn't have it, so I went a shade darker. So that's my piece. So fun, and I'm gonna. I'll talk about my plans. Maybe in my next video, or maybe, I don't know if it'll be in my December or my January video for 2025 and how I'm going to tackle my, um, my, all my whips. I don't have a whole lot of whips, actually. So, I think I counted them up and I have, I think I have less than 20. But that doesn't include what I'm going to be starting, so. Right, the other thing I worked on was... Butternut Tavern by Stacy Nash. This is being stitched on a piece of 18 count vintage country mocha. And that's where I'm at. So I think when I showed you last time, I, I know I had all the top done and I think I had was starting to fill in the house. So I got all the front part of the house filled in. The roof's all done. Mm, I still do need to add a bird up here, I think. On the house, it calls for mustard seed, which is a gentle arts, I believe. And that's the call for. And that's what I'm using. But the front of the house, I'm stitching it sideways, back and forth. And then when I get over here, I'm going, well, I've started over here, but I'm going up and down and I'm not sure I'm going to have enough mustard seed but I don't I'm not going to order anymore I went through my DMC and picked out a color that is like exact of the mustard seed so I'll finish out the skein I have just randomly in here and then I'll go in with the DMC and fill it in so and I don't know if you're going to be able to see yeah you can right there to define the two the the house from the side of the house, I did an elongated cross stitch just right there along the edge of that. So that was kind of fun, just to kind of give it some, some, um, I don't know, just give it a little bit of something on there. All right, the other whip I worked on was the Gather In by Plum Street. And everybody has seen this one. Um, I'm not sure where I was when I showed this one the last time. But I think I stitched this star and these little stars up here in the roof. Um, I have the roof outlined and I think I might have had that outlined the last time I showed this, but I'm not sure. And then I did fill in. So all the fill in on the house is done up to the top windows and up to the bottom of the top windows. And I don't know the fabric I'm using on this. Um, I'll get in close so you can see. It's 18 count, I do know that. 
and the house color is showing up very well on this fabric. Um, once I get it completely done and get the roof on, it'll probably show up a lot more. And then when I frame it, I'll, I'm, I'm going to frame it in a darker frame. So it'll bring out that house also. So that's where I'm at on that one. Right. And the other whip. I worked on was my Christmas at Hawkrin Hollow. And there's this one. And I've explained in my previous videos what I'm eliminating and how I'm changing. Um, I am, I pulled all my own colors for this and I'm not doing symbol for symbol. So as I'm stitching the block, I'm just pulling out the floss that I have pulled for this project. And um, and I'm using it where I want to use it, if that makes sense. I'll show you the block I just finished. It's this block. And um, I changed, so the changes I made, I'm going to tell you about the changes I made. I changed the house color to more of the reds that I'm using. Um, in the chart, it looks, the picture anyway, looks more um, like a brownish pink. And I want it to be red, so I changed that. My reds are, I don't know, 3777, three, seven, seven, and I think it's 3850, 30, no, 355, maybe, I don't know. The other change I made it on the chart is this: these two pieces on either side of the house, the checkerboard, were actually charted in the same color as the house. And to me, it looks like snow. So I left the same checkerboard, but I made it into snow. Um, the other changes I did is there was peacocks on either side of the house. I put trees in. Um, I took the crown off of the deer. I'm not having any crowns or any peacocks in this piece and then just the, the snowflakes I did just eliminate I think there was a couple more snowflakes on each side here and I eliminated them just because the trees were taller so and this is the piece that's so pretty I just love it I love everything about this I love working on it um, it's on 20 count vintage country mocha I have a lot of pieces on that this time. So pretty. Um, I have four more blocks I'm going to do. This has been my Sunday stitch for September and October, but I am putting it away and I'll show you why in a minute. And it may or may not be pulled out again this year. We'll see. I, I, I do enjoy stitching on it. I've had a lot of fun with it. Okay, the only other whip I've worked on, I'll show you when I get to my plans. Okay, so I've had some finishes. My first finish is Cinnamon Stars by Plum Street. Um, I don't know what this is stitched on. I do know it's 18 count, but I don't know what color it is. Um, I did make some changes down here. The pumpkins at they look like they're sitting on the fence and but in the chart there's stems like the stems of the flowers like right here is all the way under there and within the fence and so i i just took that out so love it all dmc with the exception nope it's all dmc the whole thing so that's so pretty um I don't know. I think I might frame it, but I'm not going to worry about it this year because I've moved on to Christmas. So before fall of next year, I'll get it fully finished. The other one is Butternut House by Stacy Nash. This is stitched on a piece of 14 count Milk and Honey by Fiber on a Whim. 
um, using my own thread conversion changes I made. The pumpkins at the bottom are supposed to have faces in them. I did not put faces. This is a piece for my son. So I didn't want it to be, and he was born in October. So I want it to be fall, but I didn't want it to be Halloween. Um, I did eliminate this whole top part I changed from the pattern because it said, like right here, it said butternut house, and then it had a row of numbers, and then it had a ro two rows of alphabets. So I put his name and his birth year and the initials of his kids. So, and I do have, um, I went to a thrift store and found a frame that I like for that. Um, my husband used to cut it down for me and then I will get it framed. The other finish I had was Sampler of the Seasons by With Thy Needle and Thread. Samplers of the Seasons Autumn. This is stitched on a piece of Bee's Knees 18 Count by Seraphim Fabrics. I love this fabric. It is, to me, it is the perfect fall color fabric to stitch fall on or color of fabric to stitch fall on. I have stitched spring and summer um, and I so I still have winter to do. When I start winter I think I'm going to start it in January and when I start it I will bring I will bring I'll show you all of them together. So there's that one. And I plan on framing this, but not until I get all of them done. All right. Next. Next is my starts. My first one I have is actually a start and a finish. This is Queen of the Needle by Brenda Gervais. Using my own threads. This is a piece of 18 count prairie by picture this plus that I stitched it on. Um, I love these little cuts of picture this plus. You can get them on one, two, three stitch. They are eight by 12, eight inches by 12 inches. And if you want to see what a fabric looks like to see if you want it for a bigger project, this is very, very affordable to get one of these small cuts. But there we go. My mailman's here. And I think I have a package. So anyway, love it. I, I'm going to make it into a pillow. I just have not had time to get that into a pillow yet. Sorry if my dog barks. The bellman is here. All right. Another start I had was Autumn at Hawkgren Hollow. Um, everyone has seen this one. I am not stitching the two Halloween blocks, and these are debatable if I'm going to stitch them. So I may just stitch the top part, that part right there. Um, again, pulled my own colors. I'm stitching it on 18 count vintage country mocha. I am making changes to every block, and I am. I don't think I'm going to put any other words in it. Well, I shouldn't say any other words. The blocks that have the words that make like they're supposed to be a saying in them like does that make sense like it says the skies are low the winds are slow the woods are filled with autumn glory the mists are still the mists are still on fields and hills the brooklet sings its dreamy glory or dreamy story i'm not going to stitch those words like in these blocks where it says like pumpkin pie, pumpkin, whatever, I'll stitch those in this one up here. Anyway, I'm making changes to the block, just like I'm making on, on the Christmas one. I started this the week of Halloween, um, and my goal was to get the whole top part done. And that's what I did. Let's see. This is long, so I'm folding it. And that's where I'm at. So I didn't put the spiders in up here because 
I don't like spiders. Like, I'm one of those people that if you see a spider in my house, I want to burn it down. Not really. I will never burn my house down. But if you know, you know, right? Anyway, I just, I've had a fear of spiders since I was a little girl. And I've just never gotten over it. So that's where I'm at. So what I did is I took, this bird is from another block on the chart. I just added it in. Um, I have to show you that corn. It is 100% confetti stitching right there in that corn. But it is so effective. I love it. So anyway, one last look. Yeah, this is being put up for this season. It will be pulled out in 2025 sometime. Because I do want to get some good progress on that um, in 2025. Um, new starts. I showed that one, that one. These are like all crazy because I did the I did the video and so everything's all mixed up here. All right, my friend Diane said she was going to stitch this, and I said, "Oh, I want to stitch it with you. I have loved it since Kathy went to the retreat and Teresa Koga was the designer for the retreat, and this was the retreat piece. And when Kathy showed me this, it was like, oh, I love it. And so when my friend Diane said she's going to stitch it, I thought. I told her, I'm going to stitch it with you. So I ordered the chart. I didn't even have the chart. I ordered the chart. And I am going to make this my Sunday stitch for the month of November. And because for November, I'm going to work on all Christmas. So I figured, so I don't get burned out on Christmas, my Sunday stitch will be non-Christmas. <laughs> I'm stitching this on a piece of 18 count corn silk by Seraphim, which is a very pale buttery yellow it's so pretty and these colors oh i laid the floss out on this fabric and they just pop just oh that's so pretty um i'm using all of the cult the chart all of the floss is dmc with the exception of three colors but i'm using all dmc with the exception of the red the call for um color is 221 and i'm using color and cotton valor for all the red so pretty i love it so this is going to be my sunday stitch for november i did start this on saturday i think saturday afternoon and i got most of the windows in and i got the roof outlined saturday and then sunday i finished the windows and was actually able to get that whole house done it's not as big as i thought it's going to be So that is, those are my new starts. So, and this will be continued to work on in the month of November. Okay, we're going to go on to my FFOs. Um, I didn't have a whole lot, just some tiny little ones. This is Peaches by Mill Hill. Um, I just finished it with felt on the back and the magnet that came with it because I just hang it on my fridge. I have several of the food ones that I've done and they hang on my fridge. The other two mail hills I did was, actually this is all mail hills, all my finishes are mail hills. This is Holly Elf and her twin brother Ollie Elf. They are so cute. They were so much fun to stitch. And look at the little dangly legs. And she has a ton of beads in her. Oh, it's hard to see, but anyway, I just made them into little ornaments. And I'll hang them on my tree. My tree is, um, we've actually put the tree up. It's on the other side of you. We alternate holidays with our kids, so because they're all grown and have spouses and you know their own, and so they we alternate. So this year, Thanksgiving, we'll, they will be at their in laws for Thanksgiving, so and they'll be at our house for Christmas. 
So I told my husband, I said, since we're, we're not doing Thanksgiving here, and Thanksgiving is so late in the month, because we usually decorate the weekend after Thanksgiving, I talked him into bringing our Christmas tree in. So it's not decorated. It's just that I'm enjoying the lights on it. We just, we put it up this weekend. Um, so, and oh, by the way, today is November 4th, just so you know. Um, but anyway, I just enjoyed the lights and he's just going to, we're going to, over the next couple of weeks, my plan is to have my house decorated by the weekend before Thanksgiving. So we'll just do a little bit here and a little bit there. So anyway, those will go on my tree. The other fully finished I have is Mail Hill. Um, Buttons and Beads. This is called A Stitch in Time. I actually finished this early summer and just had it sitting on um, sitting on a table in my sewing room and I finally went out into my frames I don't know what that is um, into my frames and found a frame that um, was the right, right size I found this at a thrift store I can't decide if I'm going to paint it or not I kind of like it like this Anyway, my full intentions was there's a companion to this. It's just a little tiny mill hill and it's a pin cushion, tomato pin cushion. And in this chart, it gave you an idea to frame this one and then take the other one and make it into just like a little, I don't know, a little magnet, and but not a magnet, and glue it onto this, right? Like in this corner is where it showed. And to display them together. And that was my intentions. And then I was watching Merritt Crawford on YouTube. Um, just because Buzz, um, if you haven't checked out her channel, go check it out. She has some really cute stuff. Anyway, she was showing in a couple of videos ago a thing that she had stitched, a bird that she had stitched on perforated paper and how she finished it, how she fully finished it. And I just loved it. And so I messaged her on Instagram and I asked her if I could copy it and she said of course and so I asked her if she would send me some pictures close up of her front and her back so that I could see exactly how she finished it and 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 you know and so I would know how to do it does that make sense so this is mine when I go to estate sales I collect these wooden spools um, some of them have thread on them, some of them don't. And then I just take them and I have this big glass jar in my sewing room and I just toss them into there. Well, I went through and pulled out some. And this is the original thread on here, on all of them. And um, this is called pin, Tomato Pin Cushion by Mill Hill using the whole kit to stitch it. And I glued all three of my spools together and then I had some Lori Holt um, so simple shapes templates from her quilts that I've done and so I found an oval one that would fit perfect and I traced it out on the back and cut it out and then I kind of when as I was cutting it out I was trimming it so that I could kind of get a lacy edge look there so here's the back um, I covered it with just a piece of felt and then this stick in here is a chopstick and I just wrapped it in ribbon to give it a finished look and um, glued it to the back of this and then I just glued a heart that I cut out of felt on the back and then I just tied a ribbon around the base of it so anyway but go over and check out Merritt's. It is her finish of, the, of what she stitched is really cute. And thank you, Merritt, for the idea because it's so cute. I love it. So I plan on displaying these together. But I think I'll just lean this up on a shelf and just sit this next to it. So very cute. All right. Those are my fully finishes. Um, the other things I'm going to go through really quick is every year I do ornaments for my grandkids. Sometimes I buy them, sometimes I make them. This year I decided to make them. And sometimes 
when I make them, it's a different craft. Sometimes I've stitched them. I think this is the second second ones I've stitched. But anyway, so the other, the uh, anyway, I've made them and bought ornaments. Just depends on the year and what I'm filling. So last December, Shannon Christine Designs posted these freebies on her Instagram. She did 12 of them. She did 12 days of Christmas is what she did. And um, when I saw these, I thought, oh, those would be the cutest little ornaments for my grandkids. And then I had watched a Fat Quarter Shop and they had done a finishing tutorial for these domes. And, but on their, you'll have to go watch their tutorial, but on their tutorial, they only use the front part of the dome because these are Christmas ornaments, just plastic Christmas ornaments that you can, I bought them on Amazon. If you go to Fat Corner Shop, to the video to make, to finish these, in their description box below, they have a link for these and that's how I, I come up with these. They only use the front part because they, they come apart so you can put stuff inside of them and then snap them back together. And then you'll have to see how they finished them, but it's very similar to this, only their backs are flat. Mine are not because I wanted to use the whole ornament. So I um, took a piece of mat board. You can buy the sticky board that are the same size as these from Fat Quarter Shop. They also have it in their description box, the link to the sticky board rounds. I just used mat board and I cut them round. I kind of used my ornament as, as a template and then I cut them smaller so because I wanted them to fit inside, but I wanted them to be snug inside of there, if that makes sense. I laced my stitched piece onto the mat board. I put a piece of quilting batting on there and then I laced my stitched piece on there. On the back, I did another piece of mat board and I laced my fabric, Just it's just fabric for my stash, onto there. And then I took the two pieces and I glued them together. And then once they were dry, and when I glued them together, I sewn down and then I stacked heavy things on them. I have candles. So I put a towel down and then I stacked candles on top of them. Because I, and then I, I waited till they were good and dry, like 24 hours. And then I popped them inside of these ornaments. And when I shut the ornaments, I put a, a I used... E6000. If I was to do them again, I would use the Eileen's Tacky Glue. It will work. I just put a little tiny bead. You don't want much because you just want enough that they're going to hold close because with the things inside of there, I didn't want them to pop open. And anyway, I filled them with some beads. So some white beads to kind of replicate snow. And then once they were glued shut, I just took some cording and glued around them and then I just put some hangers. On the back I put a ball pin with the, a year charm and the initial of the grandchild. Anyway, so and I stitched these on 18 count so if you stitch them on 18 count they fit perfect in these. So I'm just going to quickly show them. If you go onto my Instagram page, I have posted these on my Instagram. Um, and they are a lot better picture. So, there's that one. That one. And these will hang on my Christmas tree until we do Christmas with my kids and my grandkids. And then they will, they get to take their ornament home, but they stay on my tree until then. And there's that one. And then, um, yeah, 
anyway, so there's those. All right, what else? All right, the next thing I'm going to show you is my birthday start. My birthday is December 6th. And I thought I would go ahead and show you what I plan on starting for my birthday. So if you would like to stitch it with me, you can get the chart and get your floss all together and get your fabric. I, I'm putting it in this bag. I made this bag, another envelope style bag. And the fabric does not indicate what's in here. <laughs> I just liked it. So I am going to stitch Jardin Purve. And there's a, the name. And this is what it looks like. This is, um, you can buy this chart on 123 Stitch or if you go on to Jardin Purve. I think it's a PDF you can get off of there. Not 100% sure, but I know you can get it from their website. I just don't know if it's PDF or or not. This is not a very good picture of it because it is a, a computer generated. But if you go onto their website and find this pattern, um, there is somebody that has stitched it and you can see the stitched piece. It is very long. It is, I am stitching it on 20 count Ada and 20 on 20 count it's going to be tw almost 28 inches long so my original plan is I wanted to find banding because I wanted to stitch on banding because it's only three about three and three quarters inches wide and I found some 14 count banding but I didn't want to do it on 14 count that would make it way too long because it would make it almost 40 40 it would make it over 40 inches long. I couldn't find any banding in 30 in 18 count or 20 count. So I was talking to Kathy about it and she says, well, why don't you just make your own banding? I thought I could do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stitch the piece. And then when I go to finish it, I'm just going to sew lace along the edge of it to make it um, look like banding. Does that make sense? And I probably will finish it into a bell pull. Um, but anyway, it's all just, it just calls for DMC. I did make a couple of color changes. In this one, it calls for pink. Um, there is pink on it. A lot of pink. And it is 152 and 223, which is kind of the mauvey pink. And I changed mine to 3777 and 3830. And then the only other change I made is the girl's skin color was 754 and I changed it to 950 because the 754 was very peach, like peach, peach. <laughs> so anyway, so what I've done is I have dyed my own fabric and you're not going to be able to get a good replica of this. It's so pretty. It is very close to... Heroic by Picture This Plus, if you have ever stitched on that. It has just a slight modeling in it that's got a little bit of red and a little bit of blue, but it's very subtle in there. And, it, and like this is a huge, like, long piece. My piece is actually a lot longer than what I needed because I do want to make it, like I said, into a bell pole. So I need just an extra on the top for it. Um, I am, it does call for white or antique white, it's Weigart fabric, and since I don't, I don't stitch on white, and so, um, on here, like the, like inside this frame where the flower is, that is not stitched, it's just the white showing through, and up here on this embroidery hoop, the same. The fabric is just outlined. Um, I am going to actually stitch it in white. So all the places that show white but it's not stitched, I'm going to stitch white in there. So it's going to be it's going to be so cute. I've had this shirt for quite a while. Um, if you do look on Jardin Privé's website, the chart is not in English. 
the picture of the chart is not in English, but it is. The chart is in English. So there's that. So anyway, if you, I'm not going to have a hashtag. Um, hashtags don't work anyway, so I'm not going to have a hashtag. Um, but if you decide you want to stitch this with me, just tag me on Instagram and show me your progress because I would love to see it. Okay, so my plans for November. Let me show you my whips that I'm going to work on in November. The first one is called Christmas in My Heart by Samplers Not Forgotten. Now, I showed you these in my whip parades. I'm just showing them again quickly to, um, so you'll have a reference of where I, I'm starting at. And then when I show them in December, how much I've gotten done. So Christmas in my heart. I am stitching this on, um, I don't know what the fabric is, honestly, on this. It's, I do know it's 18 count. And that's where I'm at. So um, the house is all done with the exception of this window needs to be filled in. And I need to finish filling in that window. Then the house will be completely done. Um, yeah. So that's one thing. This will probably not be a finish this month. That's my guess. The next thing I'm working on this month is Heap on the Wood by with thy needle and thread um i have this whole bottom part done so just from this line up that top part is what i have left i am stitching this on 18 count ada that i that i dyed myself um this is where i'm at the white does, it's, the white is very soft, but it does show up pretty well in real life. So all I have to do is just that top part, this one will be done. And this, I am hoping for a finish in November, that that will be a finish. The other whip that I'm working on is from this book, Peppermint and Holly. This was a unicorn book and I was so excited when she re-released this book last year. And I went through, picked out all the pieces that I'm gonna stitch out of this book. There's only a couple that I, I don't think I'm gonna stitch. And I have cut, got all the fabric for them, all the floss for them, I have stitched one in here. Um, I've stitched this one and I will bring it next time. I stitched that last year and I started on this one last year and that's one I'm working on. And my plan is once I finish one of these, I'll start on the next one until I have all the ones stitched that I want to stitch. And using my own threads again but this is where I'm at on this one so not too much left to do um, this will be a finish this month and then I will probably start on another one Excuse me. so pretty I love it not sure how I'm gonna finish this one or the one I've already finished fully finish them I haven't decided on that Okay, and this is the last whip that I'm going to be working on this month. And this is Christmas Village by Prairie Schooler. This was a birthday start for me last year. And I remember stitching on this while we were sitting with my father-in-law as he was... passing away so and this is also a whip that I've actually worked on this 
Um, I worked on this Thursday after I finished that Hawkrun Hollow. So I worked on this Friday, I think. I pulled this out and worked on it a little bit. Um, I had all I had these trees. These are not all the trees, and these trees are no joke, I'm just telling you. But these are not all the trees. But I had those trees, this one, this building done, the horse and the sleigh. I had that tree done, and I was starting on, I was like halfway done with this house, or the school, it's a school. And so Friday, I was able to fill in this house, and then Saturday night, I was watching a Hallmark movie, and while I was watching that Hallmark movie, I got a pretty good chunk of that house done. So, um... I have done, I did change my reds because the reds, all of it is called for except for the reds. And that is, I think they were DMC 918 and 919. And again, the rusty reds. And I don't like the rusty reds. I like the, the reds. So I changed them to 777 and 3830. Um, so anyway, this probably, this won't be a finish in November. I'm going to continue to work on it, but I'm hoping to have it finished at least by the end of December. Mm, isn't that pretty? Oh, it's so pretty. It's stitched on 18 count Rustico or Vindler's Cloth. So that will be worked on. And then, those are my plans for November. Or those are my whips I'm working on for November. My plans for November. Um, I have four new starts planned for November. I'm crazy. I'm going to start this one, Peace and Goodwill by Brenda Gervais. Um, Kathy went to the Shepherd's Bush Retreat and Brenda Gervais was one of the featured designers. And she was actually literally on her way to the retreat. And... Brenda Gervais posted these on Instagram. So I took pictures, I screenshotted them, and I sent them to Kathy, and I said, please, because I knew she'd have a pop-up store, please get these for me. So she got me this one, and then she got me the snowman that looks like it's in the cloche. I'm, in, I'm not going to start that one right away, but love it. This is stitched on... A, on 36 count Tobias by Seraphim. I thought I had a piece. I don't. Um, that's what my animal crackers is being stitched on, and that was just a scrap. But my Tobias, that those animal crackers, is not the same color as the pitcher. And it, of course, Ada and Linen dyes different. So. so I went through my stash of my 18 count Ada and I was kind of trying to find something that was kind of this color. And I know I needed something that is dark enough to show up the white. So this is what I'm stitching on. And it is called Boot Camp by Be Stitch Me. 18 count. So that be pretty on there. And I think all the white will show up really good on there. And I think the colors will, will show up very well to um, if they don't, I may switch them to a little bit brighter colors, but I think they, I think they will. Because the colors I pulled, I just pulled from looking at the chart and pulled colors for my stash. So that's going to be a start. The next one that's going to be a start is this is called Santa's Santa's Flight by um, Shepherd's Bush. Sorry, I was reading the back of this. Um, if you follow Stitchy Linda on Instagram, she finished this and is so pretty 
she did not stitch it like this she stitched it as one and she stitched it on blue so if you go to her Instagram she gives you all the details anyway but her stitching is what sold me on this and so I am stitching mine on a piece of 18 count Ada that I hand dyed and I hand dyed it with denim blue and it's got a little bit of modeling in it I think the white's gonna be perfect on this it's gonna be so pretty and it's not very big so all three of those pieces are stitched as one and this fabric is only what 11 inches wide and um, and I have a two inch margin on the sides so anyway that is um, another new start that I'm gonna do and then third new start I'm gonna start this month is candy cane lane by with a needle and thread I've had this chart for several years and I said and I've had it kitted I mean I've had most of the threads pulled for it so I finished pulling the rest of the threads it is very vintage looking so it's very vintage colors um, I wanted a piece of fabric that all that snow was going to show up so it had to be dark enough does anybody else have problems with white mm. and so I chose a piece of 18 count cottage stone by um, color and cotton love it and it's pretty close to what the picture looks like for fabric so anyway I think that would be pretty on there and then all the colors that I pulled for it it's gonna be very pretty and then the last new start so my plan is to have a new start every Monday and tonight I'm tonight it's going to be I'm going to start on this one so every Monday for the month of November I'm going to have a new start my last new start is also going to be my Thanksgiving start and this one I will probably work on most of the week on Thanksgiving week and it is my first Mirabilia I have had this chart forever in my stash it came out in 1997 I've probably had it in my stash since the early 2000s it's called giggles in the snow you can still get this chart it is still available um, I one two three stitch my habit I do know that stitchery Express in Utah it's stitchery and then X slash P-R-E-S-S -S, they do have this chart and it is stitched on a piece of 32 count white linen um, so I knew for the beads to work I did think about stitching it on 18 count and then getting the beads but doing the getting the petite beads but I decided to stitch it on 16 count I don't normally stitch on 16 count because one strand is not enough and two strands is too bulky for me but I had a friend say if you stitch it on a fabric that's not an over fabric there's not going to be any shrinkage so I thought okay I'm going to do 16 count so the fabric I picked is called Chalk Dust by Fabric Flare. It is so pretty. This is the other side of it. So this is a printed fabric. It's not hand dyed. So it doesn't have any shrinkage in it. Oh, look how pretty that is it's gorgeous mm. anyway and it's opalescent so there's just a tiny bit of sparkle in it 
but not much. Not enough that, I don't know, that I would do opalescent again, but there is just a little bit of shimmer in it. Oh, it's so pretty. Look at that. Oh. Anyway, so I did do a test up here with two strands of floss, and I think it's going to look okay. So I plan on stitching it as one piece. So both of those will be stitched as one piece. And, um, oh, and the colors of the floss. I have them in a bag, so you're not going to be able to see them all. But there's pinks and magentas and blues and yellows and purples. And, ah, oh, it's they're so pretty. The colors are so pretty. I, I did lay them all out on the fabric, and it's just, oh, it's going to be stunning. So, um, the other thing I'm not going to do is, it says snow angel, snow, and then angel, above and below them. I'm not going to stitch that, either. So, anyway. Oh, so cute. Look how cute those are. Anyway. So this is going to be my Thanksgiving start. This is a very unusual Marabilia. It only has two beads and no Krynik. So there's no Krynik in that at all. So anyway, I can't wait to start that. So that is, those are my starts, my plan starts. I don't have any quilting to show today. Um, I worked a little bit on the quilt I showed last time, but not enough to even show you what it's going to, you know, to get it looked at. Once I start putting it together, then I'll I'll show that one again. Um, but that one may be put up until after the first of the year because I have a Christmas quilt I want to work on. Oh, the only other plan I have is we have a new grandbaby. So I need to finish his stocking. This is the one I've already, I already had it stitched up. I have all of the stockings stitched up. And then what I did is I stitched them all. And then I let my grandkids and my kids and their spouses all go through and pick the stockings they want. And I still have some left over. And so my daughter, my stepdaughter picked this one out for my new grandson. So I just need to put his name, put the embellishments on, and then make it into a stocking. And I will do that this month also. So that's the plans. Um, I did show all of my stockings fully finished in a video I did with Kathy on the So and So's channel. Sorry, I'm trying to put this back on the hanger. On the So and So's channel. Um, so if you want to see all of them finished up, you can go over to that channel. If you would like to see them here, let me know and in the comments, and I will show them in my next video, all the stockings that I have completely done. And these are only the only ones I'm going to show are the ones that are fully finished. I'm not going to show the stockings that are not fully finished. That's hanging in the closet for potential new members to come into the family. So I think that's it. Um, I want to say thanks to who bought my wool applique quilt kits. Um, I do have three more that I want to try to sell. I think what I'm going to do is do a separate video and I'll show the three that I still have that I want to sell. So if you're interested in that, watch for that video um, in the next couple of days. I don't know when I'll do it. Um, so that's just going to be, and it will be a short video showing the quilt kits, the wool applique quilt kits. They're all wool applique. Um, and I'll talk about how much I'm selling them for and kind of the details in that. So if you're interested in that, watch for that video because I will make a short video separate from this one and then that's it then that's all of the wool applique quilt kits that I am um, wanting to get rid of but I am selling them significant 
low, significantly lower than what I paid for, like 30% off of retail of what I paid for them, um, and free shipping in the United States. So if you're interested in it, it is a good deal, but um, that will be in a separate video. So I want to say thanks for joining me today and happy Thanksgiving to everybody in, in the United States. I will um, be back after Thanksgiving. I'll be back the first, I don't know, what, couple of days in December. Um, so watch for my video and I will show what I worked on in November and how much I got done and everything and all the stuff. So see you later. Have a good day.